like to thank you for tuning into my channel and today I'd like to invite you here to my ranch El Rancho de los Tres Gavilanes which is named after the three hawks that reside here. Uh, today I'm going to touch a little bit on what I do as a curandero. Many people don't know about the uh, traditional curandismo and I'm going to show you some of the techniques I use and some of the tools that I use and I hope that you'll uh, be with me on this journey. Thank you. I'm here today at my rancho Los Tres Gavilanes to share with you about curandismo. It may be something you're not familiar with. Even though it's well known around the world in Latin communities, it is something that is new to the English speaking population. And I hope that today I can answer some of your questions. So I'd like to share with you the history of curandismo. It predates the arrival of the Europeans here in this continent. It uh, is a practice, a holistic practice for all overall body health, mind, body, and spirit. There is herbalism in it. Uh, there is uh, counseling in it. Uh, there is massage therapy in it. Uh, there is spiritual counseling. Many people go to clairvoyance or to seek answers for things that are coming up. And one of the most important things that there's in it, that today there is a huge trend, is midwifery. People are turning to the midwife when they have their children. My personal history with this curandismo starts the day I was born, or probably you can say before I was born. My grandparents on both sides of the family have been curanderos and curanderas. So as soon as I could walk or I showed any kind of interest, I was part of a ceremony, I was part of a cleansing. So something that I grew up with that's very natural, uh, it's very uh, fulfilling and gives a lot of peace. It is something very important to me and my family. One of the things that I like to use when I do La Platica or have the clairvoyant talk with somebody is I like to use a tarot deck. Uh, I find that it's very useful for focusing for the client. They have something to focus on. The deck has been around uh, for eons. Uh, it's a great divination tool. The other thing that I also use is I use stones when I do this. I like to anchor the corners of my spread with different stones. Uh, they each represent a different kind of power, a different kind of connection. Opening and closing doors are very important when I'm doing these. Uh, the platica is uh, like going to counseling. When you go to somebody who is counseling, they're, they're using their experience, their knowledge. Uh, they're also using what they're picking up, it's what you're saying. Because a lot of times we say things, but we really don't hear what's in our heart. And someone who's there, even your best friend can hear it, and you could have a platica with them. Another aspect of curandismo is called la limpia. Limpia means to clean. It actually refers to a spiritual cleansing. Uh, Somebody may feel like they're kind of out of sorts or they may feel like they're just having too much bad luck or they just don't feel right. And sometimes they just need like a spiritual cleansing, a laying of hands sometimes. I, I'm a Reiki master also, so sometimes people come in and maybe they just need to have their chakras balanced. But one of the things that we do in Gurandismo is we use herbs. We will use sage. This is beautiful white sage from here from California. Uh, and we will use different things like frankincense and myrrh and we will actually sweep the body and this is a tool that I make myself and sweep the body, sweep the aura and cleanse it out and to get the body back in balance, get the mind and body and spirit to connect again. Uh, there are many different aspects of this. There's also a thing called mal ojo, which you probably heard is an evil eye when somebody uh, looks at you or they uh, covet something that you have, you may feel ill. I actually have physical responses. I myself have had tremendous headaches, I uh, have had upset stomachs, and there's also a, a way to take care of that by doing this, or the very, very traditional way, which I still go to my mother and father when I'm not feeling well, is you take an egg and you sweep the whole body and it absorbs all that negative energy. The sovandora, the person that does massage, uh, is very important uh, in curandismo because many of the people who seek out a curandero, uh, they live in rural areas and they can't afford to travel to the city to see a massage therapist uh, if they're, they've got a strain or something going on. My father actually is a sovandor, he's 88 years old now. I have seen my father take a man who has a pop disc, work on him for about two or three hours and to this day that man has never had a problem with his back. My father got him up and walking. Uh, they tell me stories that when my dad was a lot younger that you know some of uh, my mom's cousins would hurt themselves. One of them actually fell out of a tree and dislocated both shoulder joints and my dad put him back in place. There was no need to go to the doctor, need to go to the hospital and he lived you know a very long and happy life. And it's like a therapeutic massage 
Uh, I wouldn't consider it like a Swedish massage, it's a little bit deeper, and it also has a very spiritual as aspect because not only are they working on something that you may have injured, but they're also working on something that's deeper, that's trapped in there. Because usually a Sobandor believes that when you injure yourself, there's something that's trapped in that area. Uh, some emotion or something that you need to get rid of. And uh, it's a very spiritual process and it, it, it expels a lot of negativity and detoxes the body. Also the mind and the spirit. It's, it's very interesting. Um, I do a little bit of that. My father, uh, my father taught me, of course, you know, I was curious all the time going with him everywhere. Uh, it was very funny. Everybody always gave my dad the nickname, the, the, the man with the hands of steel, because they complained it hurt. Uh, but I've never experienced that. I mean, I really enjoy when he gives me a massage. Uh, we can move on to more things that we do as curanderos. Um, another thing that there is a very specific type is the huesero, or the bone setter. Again, very important person when you don't have insurance, when you can't get to the hospital. This is a person that actually understands how to set bones when they're broken. Uh, when you meet one of these people, they have such a great knowledge of the skeletal structure, of the muscles in your body. I mean, for someone who's never gone to medical school, they have a very detailed, organized way of seeing the body. And I've seen them, seen them set bones, and I, I've seen people afterwards, and a doctor couldn't have done a better job. You know, a Western physician couldn't have done a better job than these men did. And uh, curanderos, usually their practice uh, comes with a lot of humor. And a lot of talk, so it's a little bit more fun than visiting a Western doctor. It's a little bit too serious sometimes for my, you know, my taste. I like to joke around, and you know, it's hard enough to to deal with things, but you need to, you know, have a little happiness there along the way. Um, the other thing that we do in uh, curandismo, and it's uh, one of the things that that I really like, is uh, we also take on the role kind of being a life coach. Uh, when people are trying to change what's going on in their life, they're trying to move forward, uh, we give them affirmations. I, you may uh, have seen on Spiritual You talking about affirmations. It's a very good segment. Uh, we give them prayers and different things. Uh, we, or I say, I will fix candles, all curanderos do, but you know, certain candles with certain prayers for saints, uh, since curandismo was at one time mixed with the Catholic religion in order to hide it, in order to keep it so it wouldn't be taken from us. So we wouldn't lose the ancient medicine that we already had and how we understood our bodies worked. And it all blends together. It all comes from one high source. It's all just looking for the good, to be good and pure and to help each other. That's basically the way that the indigenous people have always lived, is helping each other, looking out for each other. And that's something that we're trying to bring to the Western society. And one of my favorite parts of uh, curandismo is a yerbero. And this is the herbalist. And it can have many different aspects to it. There can be a special mixture of herbs that you will put into a warm bath uh, to help cleanse your body. Teas, I love teas. Special teas mixed for special things. I mean, uh, most of us already know uh, there's chamomile out there, we call manzanilla. It helps you sleep, it's, it's great when you have body tension or you have body soreness. Uh, but there's a lot of different things that are not in uh, the Western market because uh, they're things that, that we keep, things that we use, and they're very beneficial. I'm sure most of you know about cilantro now because in, in uh, modern or mainstream society now, everybody loves Mexican food, and they've, they've they started to see cilantro. Uh, cilantro, when it's made into tea, is incredibly beneficial for your stomach. Of course, it's always best if you do your research, you talk to a yerbero before you try any of these things, because the mixture has to be just right. Uh, so that's a little bit about curandismo that I wanted to share with you. I'm glad that you're here at my home. Okay, so you're probably wondering through this whole video, what's all this stuff on my table? Well, the stuff on my table is some of the stuff that I will use during one of my consultations or when I get a visit from someone. Uh, my taro deck that's here uh, is one of my favorites just because it's so beautiful. I picked it up a year ago at the Roto Fair in uh, Morro Bay, which uh, I would suggest if you can go, it's yearly, it's a, it's a wonderful event. Um, and I have a couple of stones here. Tiger, tiger's Eye is one of my favorites, and this point is a tiger's eye. It's a beautiful stone, but it's a very powerful stone. This stone can anchor things down. 
uh, it has a fierce way of looking through things, if you want to say that, because it's a tiger's eye. It can penetrate many things. This one here is actually uh, just a black, like, agate stone, and this is made to transmute energy. It's pretty good when you're doing discussions and things uh, to kind of cleanse the energy coming through, because I can draw in a lot and a lot of energy. And uh, sometimes it's good to kind of filter out so you don't get some of the white noise in the background. Everybody's probably familiar with just a plain quartz crystal. Well, just a plain quartz crystal is a very powerful thing. This can amplify any energy around you. You can use it for anything. And I'll be doing a segment later on on how to care for your crystals, how to take care of them, how to re-energize them. Uh, I guarantee you, you will always have great crystals when you watch that show. I like to use white sage. This is native to California. This is wonderful. The smell is wonderful. Uh, this is used in a lot of indigenous ceremonies. It's good for neutralizing and cleansing a space. Also, um, I use it in my limpias, which we have talked about. Uh, it's just overall good. I use it when I'm done, for me, for cleansing myself. Candles. The candles here, uh, we call um, that what we do is we compuesta which means it's fixed or it's prepared in a certain way. So you can actually prepare a candle for a certain intention. Like I said, uh, curandismo was mixed with uh, Spanish Catholicism. And so we have saints and there are very powerful prayers. Prayers are important. They're just like meditation. You know, you, you can pray just to pray, just to ask for something or just to ask for clarity. You really don't have to have a specific thing to pray to other than a great creator or a great source, if you want to call it that. And so I have candles that I can prepare for specific purposes. Uh, you'll see this beautiful abalone shell. And this is very traditional. You'll see many people use it. And this is where we'll burn our resins. You know, we use frankincense and myrrh and things like that. One of the things that I really love to use is called palo santo. If you can get some palo santo, it smells so good. It means holy wood. And it just smells wonderful. It's great to put it with any kind of incense that you're using. Uh, I talked about having... Uh, something to brush the auras with and this is what I made. It's uh, made out of hawk feathers and it also has a beautiful point here on. It's a clear crystal and of course the tiger's eye. It looks like a tooth. Uh, it also has a seashell because it's not only bringing in uh, the elements of earth, wind, and fire but water. Uh, you'll see the three peacock eyes and I hold that to be the trinity. And uh, it's, it's just a really useful tool that I use for many things. I use it to cleanse my objects and uh, to sweep away auras, to sweep the room. So I do a lot of sweeping. <laughs> and this is a drum. This drum is made from one piece of a fallen tree that was struck by lightning. Uh, it's a very traditional indigenous instrument. What I use it for is for myself at times uh, to drum. It mimics the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And also what I will use it for is when I have somebody who's really having trouble expressing or letting go of an emotion, we will drum together. And there's a tradition called just drumming and letting a crying song happen. It doesn't have to be a sound, but it's just sound emanates from your body. It doesn't have to be words. And, and it will let you express emotions. You'll be able to cry it out, maybe not even without crying, but you'll be able to express it. It will just come. It will just go and come loose. Uh, if you notice this little book here, it's really not a book. This is just where I keep my cards. Uh, I just thought it was a cool little item. Um, kind of keeps them hidden. Uh, so that's just a brief overview of what I do. So if you would like more information on my products and my services, go to my website at www.casadecurandero.com. If you can't spell it, don't worry about it. There are links below. Thank you very much for being at my home today. Thank you.